We're glad you're interested in problem-based learning. According to Forbes, October 2019, problem-based learning may be the best method for sharing information to change behaviors. But all interactive learning environments have their share of challenges and problem-based learning is no different. Effective problem-based learning requires a skilled facilitator that understands how to engage an audience, encourage discussion, and from time to time address our over-contributors. Next, we'll talk about nine tactics that a skilled facilitator may use in the problem-based learning environment. Number one, the use of the open hand. When a facilitator uses an open hand to a group, it provides a nonverbal communication to the group, inviting them in, inviting commentary, and encouraging conversation about the subject at hand. Key phrases a facilitator may use are, how do you interpret this information? What do the rest of you think? A skilled facilitator will not only use their hands, but also their body to invite conversation and commentary. Look directly at someone nodding approval to answer a question, and with an open hand is extremely effective. It's equally important while inviting commentary for a facilitator to never be intimidating to the group members. You should not call on them by name uh, to respond to a question by putting them on the spot or pointing out to them that they need to answer a specific question. The layout of the room when we conduct problem-based learning in person is preferable to have the room set up in a U-shaped manner, a U-shaped table. This allows the facilitator to move more freely within the room. And using presence to inspire the group engagement. It's common to see facilitators to walk deeply in the end of the U, not just stand up at the front and give a lecture, but in order to be closer to all the participants and help bring as many of the participants into the discussion as possible. So they all feel that they have contributed to the group endeavor at the end of the session. The use of silence, also called the seven second rule, in a non-intimidating manner, facilitator may use silence to inspire conversation and a group engagement. It is well documented that silence is uncomfortable for most people. So when a facilitator is silent for more than seven seconds following an open-ended question, one of the mantra phrases we call them, typically the group member will begin to engage. Tactic four, the triangle. This is where the facilitator will identify two group members with opposing viewpoints, and then reiterate their opposing viewpoints, asking others to comment, and basically take sides. This can produce a little bit of tension in the room, which actually promotes learning by causing many to produce some adrenaline. And you can use the body language techniques that we already talked about here to get the group debating. Sound, or more acutely, changing the tone or level that the facilitator speaks in to serve as a tactic to engage the group. In all groups in conversation, we lose focus. This can be a challenge in the problem-based learning environment. A skilled facilitator will recognize when a group has lost focus on a specific topic at hand they may be discussing and will ask questions and set it up to redirect and focus the conversation for the stated goals of the problem-based learning session. Reflection. Said another way, 
Act like a mirror. A problem-based learning session is not about the facilitator, it's about the group. It's the job of the facilitator to ask questions, listen to the group's answers, restate or make corrections to the answers, and when necessary, use the prior tactic of reduction or refocusing the conversation. Number eight, dealing with an over-contributor, also known as a nuisance to the group he's participating in. It can be as simple as the facilitator saying, we've heard a lot from this side of the room, the person who is a nuisance, let's say John, we'd like to get the thoughts from others. What do the rest of you think? In more extreme cases, it may be necessary for the facilitator to address the overactive contributors prior to the session. It can be approached by stating to an individual, we know you're an expert in this area, but we want to encourage others to share their thoughts. And now for number nine, our final tactic how to address comments of off-label use of products. A facilitator should clearly and quickly verbally recognize the comments related to off-label use of any product, stating that this is an off-label comment. State the FDA's indication for the product, and then refocus the group back to a script of the case discussion that is on-label. Because we typically have PBL facilitators announce at the beginning of the case that off-label discussions are not allowed at this promotional PBL program, it is less likely this will have to be dealt with. 